Hello, everybody. The next talk will be by Lars Vicinius about backup using Opnum for backing up your data. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. So this is a fairly short talk, and uh, I suspect there will not be enough time for any uh, interactive Q&A. But if you go on irc.oftc.net and on the hash Obnam channel, uh, I will answer questions there later. Or you can come and ask, uh, ask me questions afterwards uh, if I happen to look like I'm not running away. Many years ago, in about 2004, I had a weekend and I realized that I haven't done a proper backup for a long time. I had, uh, I think, three computers at home, all of which contained various bits of live data, and it was really tedious to, to do a proper backup. So I went and bought a, a stack of CDs and, and started running some scripts to, to make backups. And then I started verifying those CDs, and, and maybe one in five of them failed. This was not fun. It took all weekend. And this is obviously why I didn't actually make backups very often. Yes, there was a time when I didn't do backups very often. Uh, and then I started thinking about what can I do differently. And some people suggested that, hey, you should buy a tape drive. And I said very uh, dirty words to them. I don't like tape drives. Other people do, and that's fine. I don't care. Uh, I could switch from CDs to DVDs, which would mean that the media cost goes up, but I have many fewer of them. But uh, even then, it was clear to me that I would need several DVDs, and, and the number would go up very soon. So I decided to look at uh, switching to hard drives. And I did some calculations, and, and hard drives were were or had just become so cheap that this was feasible for me. Obviously, hard drives have a problem that eventually you need more than one, and, and you start having piles of hard drives. But at least it's easier to copy data over to a new drive. You can mount all of them uh, as one file system and then just copy. I did not find a good program for backing up to hard drives. I looked for about two years and, and looked at various choices, and I wanted to host some of those drives in a different locations over the network, so this brought some complications. So I didn't start out to write a backup program, but that, was a, that is what I ended doing. One of the issues I had was that the existing backup software was written for tape drives. And they were treating hard drives as virtual tape drives. Makes no sense to me. There were a few features I wanted. And uh, one of them was that I wanted snapshots. I wanted, wanted every backup generation, every individual backup run, to be a snapshot of all of my live data. And so that I could decide to pick and choose which ones I keep when I start throwing uh, expiring uh, backups. I did not want to have to say uh, restore uh, generation 4 and then meaning I have to uh, restore first generation 1 and then apply a delta from generation 2 and then a delta from generation 3 and from 4 before I get what I want. I'm going to go where I go and, and that's all I want to have. Since I wanted to host my backups elsewhere at least some of my backups elsewhere, I wanted to have encryption. And I wanted to have uh, encryption that is done locally on my computer before it leaves uh, the computer. There were programs that did this, but they lacked some of the other features. Since I'm doing online backups, and since hard drives back in 2005-ish were still very, very expensive, that was a joke. Uh, I wanted to have deduplication. I don't want to transfer 
uh, data over a one megabit ADSL line over and over again. If it's already on the remote end, I want to reuse that bit of data. And I don't want to have to spend huge amounts of effort to get this to work. In a previous life in, in, in the 90s, I was tasked to set up Amanda in our office network. And this was not fun. Any backup solution that requires me to read more than one page of instructions is basically lost. I'm getting too old for reading manuals. Oblam does all of those things now. It's taken a while because I write Oblam in my free, so, uh, free time, but it does, does this now. It has a few other things that are slightly interesting as well. It has a Fuse plugin, which means that you can mount your backups and then look at them as if they were a directory tree. Every backup generation is a separate directory and you can look at any of them as you wish. I wrote a manual. It's not one I would read, but it has a, a read this first section that is very, very short. Uh, I wrote automated test suites, which are not the best ever, but they catch most of my mistakes. And obviously users don't directly care about test suites because they don't want to contemplate the possibility of a backup program ever having had a bug. However, I care because this makes it much easier for me to trust things. It also has the world's ugliest website. Those of you not reading your email can go to oblam.org and, and marvel at my web design anti-skills. Daniel. It doesn't have animated gifts of people giving <laughs> Okay, I'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Oblam has some problems as well, and I want to be entirely honest about them. One of them is that almost the entire development team is here. It's my uh, hobby project, and, and there are a few people who occasionally send patches or help on the mailing list, but it's not a large community. Obviously, this is going to grow now by a number of people. Uh, it's known to be very slow. It is possibly the slowest backup program ever, though I'm working on fixing that. It's not ready to use yet. Uh, and occasionally there have been fairly serious bugs, up to and including destroying people's backups. My test suite is nice, but it's not perfect. Please help. As far as I know, all the, uh, f all the known bugs are fixed now. Sorry, all the bugs that might corrupt the backup repository are fixed now. And I fixed yesterday morning before I left for DebConf, a bug that would prevent parts of my demo that is coming up. I made the release yesterday. It also has the worst, world's worst marketing team for any software ever. The world has large numbers of backup programs. It seems that every hacker and every sysadmin at some point realizes that, yeah, they really should make a backup, shouldn't they? So they write a wrapper script around our thing. And some of them release this on, on, on as free software. And this is good. I do not want to compare to any other backup program. I don't have the time to go and look at them properly, and any comparison I make would be unfair. However, if someone else wants to do this, this would be a service to all free software users. All, rather, all free software users who have any data they ever care about. A proper comparison would, would be helpful. I don't care which one you use as long as you make backups and never lose data. Or rather, as long as you never lose data. If you lo never lose data and don't make any backups, good for you. So, I'm going to do a couple of live demos and I need someone to hold my mic. <laughs> 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 no, 
no, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, so I have two machines here. The left tab, the current tab, is my laptop. The right tab is my server. Or rather, it used to be my server. There we go. I'm not telling anyone where the server is, just in case you go and break it. <laughs> that would be telling. <laughs> so the first demo will do what I call a pull, sorry, a push backup, wrong file. And this is an example configuration file for Obdam. It uses an uh, ini format, which is common. Uh, the root variable specifies where the live data is, uh, is, the data you want to back up where it is. And I'm going to back up my backup program. Repository is where backup should go. And Obnan can run, uh, do uh, access the, uh, repo the, the repository over SFTP. So we go to the server machine and put it in that directory. If the directory doesn't exist, it gets created. I also want to encrypt my backups using a, a GPG key. And I'm use setting the uh, source for random bits to dev u random so that the demo goes faster. Some people tell me that this is the proper default anyway. So this is how you would use this. You specify the configuration file and you... Second? Good enough? Uh, and then you have the subcommand called backup. If you push, if you put the configuration file in a uh, file called obnan.conf in, in, in one of the usual directories, it will pick up that automatically, so you don't have to repeat the config <coughs> option. And obnan takes a while, so I should sing and dance for a while. Uh, what it's telling there is how long it has taken, how many files it has found, and how much data it has found, and, and it would tell you if my font was smaller, what file it is currently doing on, working on. And some people think uh, this could be more, more, uh, more useful uh, feedback uh, could be provided. And that is entirely true, but I have never found a, a solution that satisfies everyone. Come on, there we go. Then it gives you some statistics on, on, on uh, how, how long things took. Then we run the second generation. There were no changes, so this should, oh, it did go faster. And that's how you run a backup. <coughs> the Fuse plugin is what I'm going to be demoing next, where you can mount the backups you have made. And that's what it looks like. However, I will show you this in Nautilus because that's more graphical, unless this is too small. <laughs> Can everyone see this? So there are, there's a directory for every uh, backup generation. The first backup is called generation two. The second one is 11. These are not random, but effectively weird numbers that Obnam chooses for this. Don't worry about the fact that they are very weird. We can go and open a backup. This is yes. So he said that the numbers for generations that Oblan chooses are strongly monotonic, and I, if I understand my maths correctly, it is true. Uh, so this is a view into a backup stored on my 
server, which is somewhere unspecified. <laughs> and uh, you can go and open files. You can go and open files with various programs. It looks to uh, these tools exactly like a file system. You can't make any changes. This is a backup. You can't delete files from your backup. And uh, it is a little bit limited in some corner cases, meaning that sometimes programs can get a little bit confused. But what you can do is say that, okay, I want to restore those stickers into my home directory, into the demo directory, and there we go. And as usual with Fuse, that's how you unmount. I have a uh, second config file. This would do a pull backup, where it basically use, uh, accesses the server over SFTP and stores the repository locally. And it's equally boring to look at. takes a while. It le I thought it went faster than this when I prepped. Must be bad network connections to my server. <laughs> uh, to Obnum, you specify both the location of the live data, the root, and uh, the location of the backup repository using either a local file path or a URL, SFTP URL. And Obnum doesn't care where things are. Oh, there we go. I could show you how to browse this backup repository uh, as well, but it looks exactly like the previous one, so it doesn't matter. And I'm about out of time, so thank you. Thanks. Is there any questions? Ah. Yeah. Hi, Lars. I'm using Opnum on several machines, and I regularly have the problem that there are old logs that I have to uh, um, open by force, so we run Opnum force log. Um, we, there already was a discussion on the mailing list that um, there should be a timestamp on the logs or somehow information that Opnum can uh, now, when it is safe, to ignore those logs. What's the status of this on the roadmap? It turns out that if I put any information into the log file, it gets encrypted at the moment, meaning that if you have to lock a different client. So, Obnum repositories can contain data from multiple uh, backup clients. Uh, it gets encrypted with someone else's key and you can't decrypt it, and then you can't unlock it either, which is slightly unfortunate. Uh, status is that once I'm done with what I call format green albatross, I hope to start looking at these annoying, slightly smaller problems than every backup taking until the heat death of the universe. <laughs> but certainly that kind of thing needs to be fixed because it's a, a fairly big problem. Hello, Lars. Uh, I, I'm, I, maybe you said that, but I didn't understand it. Do you handle extended attributes in that backup? Yes, I handle extended attributes in the live data. Oh, that's very good. Thank you. Hi. Uh, you said it's slow. Um, why? 
I like to make people cry. <laughs> I, I'm not so much interested in your personal motivation in making it slow, but rather the technical reason how you made it slow. So how, how, did, you, how did you make it slow? <laughs> It took years and years of work. <laughs> no, uh, the technical reason for why Oblam is slow is a case of multiple reasons. One of them is that I'm using the uh, copy and write B3 that ButterFS is also using. Is this on? Yes. Um, and I have a, my own pure Python implementation of those. And, and they're uh, in many ways really nice, but I couldn't make them quite fast enough. Neither could butter us. Sorry. Um, another reason is that uh, I have largely so far concentrated on making it correct, apart from annoying little bugs and so on. But handling things like uh, extended attributes, handling things like being able to remove backup generations, handling things like actually being able to simultaneously do encryption and deduplication. And then I thought, oh yeah, uh, by the time I'm done with this, uh, hardware is going to be so fast, it doesn't matter how slow I make it. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> but uh, one of the examples for, ac uh, technical actual examples here is that when Omnam does deduplication, it does this by uh, taking the live data and, and, and creating, uh, dividing it up in chunks. And currently every one of those chunks gets uploaded separately to the server. That's a round trip. That can be hundreds of milliseconds long. And the default chunk size is one megabyte, so most people have files smaller than one megabyte most of the time. Source files. <laughs> no, most people have source files less than a megabyte. So does it also mean you can also back up to some other file system uh, using Fuse and because some backup solutions do it with the hard links which where you ca can't, can't, can't use a Fuse file system like DuffFS encrypted already. Um, so I can just give a pass to a DuffFS encrypted and it will work. I'm not, not entirely sure I understood that but uh, I do handle hard links in, and, and uh, Omnum makes, uh, makes uh, a lot of, uh, takes a lot of effort to make sure that there are no inherent restrictions like that. Because I don't want, that's all part of the being correct, I don't want to have restrictions like not handling hard links or not handling files of zero bytes or not handling files that end with .jpg. JPEG PG or, or whatever. There's no point in, in having a backup program that can't handle your data. Or Oblam also has a mode of deduplication that basically says never deduplicate and another mode called verify where it always verifies that there's no checksum collision in order to accommodate people who do research in the checksum collisions. Because it would be really unfortunate of spending five billion CPU years of generating a SHA-512 uh, checksum, making a backup, losing your hard drive, having to restore and not have a collision anymore. Uh, is, it also, uh, is it also possible? Same, but okay. Excuse me. Is it also possible to make a backup Use, uh, uh, using a uh, disk attached to local machine? Yes. Okay, thank you. There you go. <laughs> oh, right, that, yeah, that makes more sense. Hi, um, you said it, export, it supports extended attributes. Um, when you say extended, do you mean as in um, SE Linux levels of, you know, SE, SE Linux um, permission things? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I've never actually used SE Linux, but if it stores them using the standard uh, extended attribute mechanism uh, as is used for, for example, ACLs, Obnum should handle them as long as Obnum has permissions to read and write those. I think we are very short of time, so maybe one more question. Um, hi. My question is, uh, with the more in increasing use of uh, file systems like ButterFS and ZFS that have uh, advanced features, does Omnum, is Omnum uh, able to uh, leverage those features somehow? No. Okay. <laughs> is it Ob Omnum is written basically uh, to assume as little as it can get away with from the file system where the repository is stored. Meaning, for example, it can use the FAT file system. Yes, you can store your backups with Obnum on a SD card in, that works in your camera. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And uh, I have Obnum stickers if anyone wants them. <laughs>